Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down two relatively large storms that'll be coming to the United States over the next 10 days, and both of these will cause various problems. This includes heavy rainfall that'll lead to flooding, the potential for severe weather may return as early as this weekend, or if not next week, in addition to a much warmer weather pattern that's coming to the United States that has no signs of leaving anytime soon and this weather pattern could bring record-breaking high temperatures to much of the country. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast and let's begin first with what's happening right now in the United States and we will begin with the southeast United States and this is an area that has been very active over the last 48 hours and that is all due to a disturbance that is really bringing tons of moisture across areas like Florida and even into southern Georgia. This has led to a lot of flooding and even a little bit of some spin ups down in South Florida that's been associated with a very low-end tornado risk today but all this activity will be moving off coast as we go into tomorrow and even though the storm is mostly consistent of just rainfall this is actually delayed outdoor events like the Daytona 500 that was happening today that was delayed till tomorrow afternoon and that's all because of all this rain that is right now moving across the southeast United States now for much of the Great Plains it remains dry right now we do have a little bit of some activity right now moving over areas like Wyoming in Colorado really not too concerning at this point and then back up in the northeast we have that arctic blast that is really more up in Canada more than anything but we do have some of that cold air moving into the northeast tonight all the way through tomorrow which will keep some areas quite chilly over the next 24 to 48 hours now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be coming to the United States over the next 10 days and to look at that we're going to look at the jet stream this gives us an idea of the weather patterns that are happening across the United States and notice as we go into Monday and Tuesday we are actually going have an upper level disturbance back over in the Midwest. This won't really bring any rainfall per se, but it might bring some cloud covered areas in the Midwest, but overall really nothing too crazy there. Once we go into Wednesday and Thursday though, notice this ridging feature that we're going to begin to notice as we go into Wednesday across much of the Great Plains. And this ridge is actually going to bring much warmer weather and as well as drier weather to a large chunk of the country. Meanwhile, we'll have a little storm back over in the Pacific Northwest, bringing some rainfall and high winds. But this feels very reminiscent to what we saw a few weeks ago when we had the atmospheric rivers moving through California. This feels very reminiscent mainly due to the fact that heat is going to build up across much of the United States. This is almost going to act like a wall across the Great Plains preventing most storms from entering into the United States. There is an exception to this though. Once we go closer to the weekend, we will at least have one storm most likely leak through this. And what I mean by that is that we will likely have a storm go just above this ridge coming out of the Rocky Mountains. And then once we go into Friday, this particular storm will likely move over to the east coast of the United States. So this is about six days out or so, five days out. And obviously, there's still several days until this happens, so things might change a little bit, but this storm looks to be relatively large. I don't think this is going to bring a nor'easter or a winter storm, but it will likely bring a lot of rainfall across much of the east coast of the United States, likely a little bit of cooler weather to go along with that. And then once we go into Saturday and Sunday, that moves off to the east. We're not done yet, because there will likely be another storm sometime the following week, so around February 26th or so, this would likely come out of the Pacific Ocean, and the computer models actually have been very, very consistent with showing this for the last 48 hours or so, which is not very common when we're talking almost 200 hours out from now, which again, February 16th, that's still almost 10 days out. But notice this on the computer models as we go into Monday, a trough moves off of the Pacific Ocean in California, and eventually as we go into Tuesday, this moves into areas like the Great Plains. And also notice with that, there is going to be a potential for this to be negatively tilted and obviously again still eight nine days out things could easily change but I do want to mention that the jet stream also would be pretty strong this would be supportive of some sort of severe weather setup as we go into the following week it's something to keep in mind but by no means is this something you should be panicking about or anything like that we're still again eight to nine days out things could easily change between now and then but what does this all look like on the computer models let's check this out as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday notice most of the country will remain pretty dry overall only exception is really the west coast to the United States. Once we go into Wednesday and Thursday, that storm develops across areas in the Central Plains, so some showers, maybe some thunderstorms Thursday morning in Missouri, and those will stretch into the Ohio Valley as we go into Thursday morning. Eventually, by the afternoon and evening, we're actually going to be watching two separate storms, one of which will bring some snow to the higher elevations of New Hampshire and Vermont. Again, nothing really too concerning. I think overall, the snowfall accumulation would be very minimal either way. Once we go into late Thursday, though, we'll eventually have those showers and even a few 
few thunderstorms moving across the Dixie Alley into the East Coast. I would not rule out an isolated severe weather threat from anywhere from Mississippi back into South Carolina, but I think overall that threat of severe weather will remain very low and primarily inland. Once we go into Friday morning, that storm moves a little bit closer to the coast. A bit more of a winter storm attempting to develop back up in Canada, but I don't expect this to impact the country. Once we go into Friday afternoon and evening, for the most part, this low pressure system moves offshore. And then as we go into Saturday morning, we are done with this with maybe some high winds behind it that could lead to at least some sort of colder weather. High pressure builds behind that with sinking air in place. Once we go into Sunday and Monday, again, this is going into the following week. So about eight to nine days out from now, we'll have to watch for that storm back over on the West Coast of the United States. And obviously this is long term, so things could easily change. But what the computer models have been showing have been actually, again, very consistent. This is Tuesday morning. Notice a very strong trough in the central plains. A few different things we'll need to watch for with this system if it ends up verifying would be the potential for some snow. Also, the threat for severe weather will have to be monitored. Again, there's going to be a lot of different aspects with this storm as long as it does happen. But again, we are still you know, eight to nine days out. Things could easily change. Make sure you stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. We'll keep you posted with the latest if anything changes here. And just for comparison, this is the GFS model on the same exact storm early next week. Notice it shows it over areas in the Rocky Mountains, perhaps like a winter storm sort of event. The GFS model actually makes us a stronger and much larger storm in the United States. But again, what this exactly does, do we see snow out of this, etc. There are just so many variables that are super uncertain since we're still talking over seven days out. So again, make sure you stay tuned we'll keep you posted with the latest as that storm does evolve and this is the low level jet so this gives us an idea if there's any rotation in the lower levels with supercell thunderstorms that would develop from either of these storms and we're really not going to have much of that this weekend there will be a little bit of a low level jet back on the east coast of the united states back through the southeast so we might get a little bit of some maybe isolated severe weather activity but nothing crazy more concerningly we'll have to watch going into the following week for the potential for some severe weather notice a much stronger low level jet around 50 to 60 knots that would represent a bit more rotation in the lower levels Monday and Tuesday of the following week but again we're still talking at the very end of this month things could change over the next several days so make sure you stay tuned all right last thing I want to talk about is the big temperature difference that we're going to see over the next 10 days notice right now below average temperatures still for much of the southern tier of the United States many areas 10 to 15 degrees below average that will change though this week we're gonna have a warmer air mass starting to build across much of the United States from the Great Plains back into the Midwest some areas in North Dakota will be as much as 35 degrees above average by Wednesday. Thursday and Friday that warm air will sift, but kind of simmer down a little bit because of that trough that'll move through the Great Plains back into the East Coast. By the weekend, things start to warm up again. We will likely be dealing with some record-breaking high temperatures as we go into early the following week. Notice again, the temperatures could be as much as 30 to 35 degrees above average anywhere from Texas back into North Dakota, so it's definitely going to get pretty warm. But for now, temperatures in the 20s tomorrow morning all the way as far south as uh, Mississippi. Some areas will be right around freezing once we go into tuesday and wednesday that warm air starts to move off to the north we'll have a couple spots in west texas crank into the 90s and also a much of texas will at least be in the 70s and 80s and then once we go into the next week so around monday and tuesday of next week this will also stay relatively warm for much of the united states as long as that warm air mass builds back in again the midwest the central and southern plains could easily be in the 60s and even 70s back down that direction but notice the midwest again dealing with well above average temperatures for this time of the year Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.